Hey, I'm Paul Roberts. This is Conscious Counseling 101. And I haven't thought of what I'm going to say today. I'm just driving along. I uh, already got back from the commute. Got to go down to Home Depot and get some spray paint. Um, so, let me think about this. What needs to be said? Hmm. How about self-value? How do you know that you're worthwhile looking after? How do you know that your values that you have, that you've got for yourself, where do you, where do they come from? How do you know they're worthy? How do you know that what you think you think is um, good enough? What kinds of things make you feel good about yourself? Uh, how do you know that that's what you're going to use to say that you're valuable? If if you're if your foundation of self-value is built on a rocky foundation, it's very likely that the things that you do for yourself um, and continue to try to, to make yourself feel good and how you watch after yourself and run your life is going to crumble if your foundation is not strong. So a lot of things that people find self-value from are instilled in them from childhood a lot of it has to do with, you know, whether you behave well, whether you do what uh, supposedly is good for society, whether you do good things for other people. You know, they borrow from the golden rule, you know, do unto others. And a lot of that you've ingested. And you build your life on the fragments of these things that you had in you, that were told to you. But how do you know whether or not these are the things that make you? self-value the strongest that it can be. Look at all the people that go and wreck themselves by not taking care of themselves, subscribing to things that make them weaker, less physically active and strong, and, and they get into sicknesses and diseases easily. They don't do things that protect themselves. They just generally don't treat something like a vessel that they are in a way that something that was truly self-valued would be treated. And I say that I believe this is because the self-value traits that have been learned since childhood haven't been relearned and consciously evaluated from different perspectives. They haven't been bolstered and really stood on. In other words, the person's still a child. The person hasn't become an adult. They haven't relearned uh, or unlearned what they had instilled in them. That isn't really enough. What's instilled in you isn't really enough to build your character. What you need to do is you need to start from square one. You need to say to yourself, why am I worthwhile? Why should anybody care about me? Why should I care about myself? Why should I treat myself decently? Why should I work a long-term goal for a long life where I'll come to something, be to something, be some kind of meaningful life purpose based on these fragments of uh, that I left in my childhood? It's, the the answer is probably you shouldn't. And that's why so many people subscribe to lesser diets than they should have, lesser exercise routines than they should have, um, vices that cause them to be less healthy than they, could, they should be. People don't see a value in themselves or in a purpose or meaning in life as strongly as they probably could. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you, I can tell you how to do this. I can tell you. All I'm saying is you're going to be stuck with yourself for a long time. And you're going to be waiting here on this planet for a long time. If the things that you enjoy most in life are all you're living for, you'll probably have a more addictive personality. You'll probably fall for things easily. Um, but I think at the core, really, that's making this happen is self-value. Isn't, isn't made in a conscious way by people enough. Self-value is something that... Um, probably hasn't been considered. Self-help is is something that would go in, in tandem with this kind of thinking, you know, like self-help books and talking with somebody that wants to help you from outside of you and says, hey, I've got a different perspective I want to share that I can help you with. You can help yourself by looking at something differently than you do. Um, how much introspection do you use on a daily basis? How much introspection do you use? Are you about that at all? 1%, 5%, 10%, 25%?
<laughs> someone like myself that analyzes just about everything, I, my bars are way high on everything, including introspection. So I've spent a lot of time figuring out who I am, how I came to be who I am, who I would rather be, how I see the values of the world uh, made of high quality and low quality types of ideals. And where is my place in that? How can I rise above that? How can I see that others let me down and I need to be above that? How can I see that very few that I look up to finally, since I had a long life of uh, going towards self-value and understanding, uh, very few people I can actually borrow from. I can find everything I need within myself for self-value. And I spent a lot of time thinking about it. I value myself enough that I would take care of myself I value myself enough that I believe there must be a purpose for me and what I'm capable of doing with my skills or just my being. I value myself enough that I start looking for this on a daily basis. I analyze what I'm doing and what I'm not doing. I don't use the guilt that other people you know, instill on you or, or the praises that other people instill on you. Um, I, uh, I don't... Uh, I gotta get through this whole thing. Um, uh, transitory things like that, uh, things that don't come from yourself, are filled with faulty notions that others bestow upon you. Not only in your training and your authority figures and early in life that tell you what things are important, but even now, if you look to things outside, well, you become codependent. You become, your thoughts are made up of what others are doing what and you're trying to emulate them you're looking up to somebody trying to emulate them that's not a way to find self-value because in the very first place what are you doing you're looking for self-value by comparisons you're looking to someone else <laughs> for your self-value you're valuing someone else as a litmus test more than yourself right off the bat from the get-go so what you need to do is you need to say to yourself I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna value myself so you're going to say to yourself, what do I want out of life? Who am I and what makes me happy? And what do I think is the value of my life purpose here, not only for myself, but for others? And you're going to say, you're going to, you're going to have to disassociate things that you enjoy doing as a part of reason to be alive. A lot of people think that reason to be alive is because life is good, it's a wonderful world. I'm amazed by things, I enjoy things, I'm titillated by things, I, I have pleasure from things. This isn't a self-value thing because the more you realize you're living for just what you might encounter as you go through life, the more you'll realize you're not living for yourself. And therein lies an absence of a real self-value source. So I would recommend you disassociate in everything that you think you're living for that you like to enjoy as anything that has to do with self-value. And I would say to you, why not consider a different perspective? How about everything that you don't gain anything from at all? Or in a service, a service way. How about starting to look at everything in your life that you don't gain anything from, but that affects the world in some positive way, or you think may, that you give in a service type role. How about starting to think of how much you foster that as a place of gauging, at least in that area of your life, what your self-value is. How much do you care about something else other than what you can get out of it? If you could start to care about the physical condition and other people's physical conditions, you don't feel their pain necessarily. You might have empathy for them, but you don't feel their pain necessarily. But you see their need. You see how you might be able to benefit them. You can start exercising muscles that help you to become more than you are for someone else. It's easier because you can't feel their pain or their pleasure. So now you then you take and you work on that model. You take that model then and you overlay it over yourself. Start looking for things that don't associate. You don't associate with having an enjoyable life. The wonder and splendor of this world. Don't get those confused. That's not self-value. Start saying, what can I do for myself as if I was someone else doing it? Not me, because I'm feeling it. If I'm, if I'm directing my motivations based on what I'm feeling, that's going to be the source of what's telling me what to go for. And I am going to be literally a slave to that force that's telling me what to do because it's getting pleasure motivation or whatever kind of motivation out of it. And it's going to get all twisted around. 
What I would recommend that you think of is think of yourselves as another person. Think of others, what you do for others, that you don't get anything back, nothing reciprocal. And then apply those same techniques that you develop for others. Spend some time on this towards yourself. Try to do onto yourself what you would do for others and see if that doesn't help you realize that you're valuable. You're worthy of having this effort that you go through. Start to isolate what's value for self and what is whatever I'm doing that makes me feel good. That's not value. Try to disassociate that. Try to spend time thinking about what your purpose is in servitude that you can give without getting back. Bring those levels higher. Be consciously aware of them. Think about these things every day. Because if you can be more of a servant, then you're valuable. Maybe not to yourself, but to others. Now, how do you get to be valuable then? You started to become more valuable to others, not to yourself. Well, I think that you get more valuable because you realize there's more than yourself. So you start to understand the physical form, the mentality, the mind, the soul, the conscience, in a higher way. And you start to see yourself, just like everybody else, as a higher potential form, a life form, that requires more value, that should have more value. And because you've started to exercise those muscles more than you would have before, based on just what do I want and what do I like and how can I accumulate it, your, quant your quantitative way that you view self-value will rise. Once you see some progression in these areas, continue. See if you can make it rise in other ways. See if you can continue to work what you've already got your hands dirty doing now and do more of it. Flex more of those muscles. This would just be one step, one particular way to start thinking about self-value in a more focused way and start using techniques that can help you to realize your value. And ultimately, if you work on this road a while, what's gonna happen is one of the first things you're gonna do is, when you start gaining more self-value, is you're going to drop things easier, more logically, more rational, that are taking away from your potential for that self-value. Destructive forces in your life, faulty notions, friends that you thought were friends but really they keep you down, vices, things that you subscribe to that make you less healthy, have less energy, um, wasting your thought energy on things of less, like a television show that's just crap or, or gravitating towards dirty jokes and derogatory thinking about uh, various groups or people or things in life. These types of things can make you feel less about yourself. These types of physical things can make you be less. One of the first things you'll do with the self-value that you gain through this first technique that I've talked with you about is realizing you wouldn't want to do that to someone else if you're caring. Why would you do it to yourself? Maybe a laugh at someone else's expense. A negative way of looking helps you feel better. That's never going to make genuine self-value. It's like a hit of a cigarette or a vice, and you're, you've got to start seeing it as artificial. If you have a genuine quality that comes out of you that wants to help somebody, recognize that for a genuine quality. Look in yourself for genuine qualities you want to help yourself. That's one of the first steps. This little, uh, this little video here is one of the first steps of some of the things that I could suggest that you use to help yourself with consciously thinking about raising your self-value so that you can be healthier and happier and become more heightened conscious, aware, physically better off. Just everything can start to come more into focus. I'm Paul Roberts. This is Conscious Counseling 101. Let me know what you'd like to have me talk about next.